Simple circuits. A circuit or circle is a path around. For us, circuits are used to study how electricity works. They're fun, the math is downright easy, and it's a great way to stay in shape. We're going to represent circuits with a schematic diagram. One of these things here. Sometimes they get a little hairy, though. All right. These symbols um, not all of them will you use. For instance, uh, AC supply is HL only. Capacitors are HL only. A heating element um, is going to be HL only. A thermistor um, changes the resistance based on temperature in a light dependent resistor if light hits a sensor then uh, resistance changes lamp a resistor resists the flow transforms the energy a cell a single cell is a source of potential difference a battery is multiple are multiple cells a switch looks like this straight line where it's open if it's open then the switch is off. The lights are off. If you flip the switch on, it's going to close the switch. Because if you close the switch, then you have a closed circuit. And a closed circuit is where electricity is allowed to flow. If the switch is open, no electricity, no lights. An ammeter measures the current in a circuit. A voltmeter measures the potential difference. Uh, for a specific spot on a circuit. A variable resistor, you can change the resistance. Potentiometer, you can change the potential difference. Thermistor, LDR, transformer, we're not going to worry, that's HL only. And a diode, uh, electricity can only flow in this direction. Think about this like an arrow. Conventional current. So we know that it's the electrons moving, right? We talked about this. They're jumping from valence shell to valence shell to valence shell to valence shell. We know that now. That's called electron flow. However, physics has been around for a long time. And when it first came about, Ben Franklin uh, messed everything up. And he thought it was positive charges that were going on because there were no electrons in his time, right? So it had to have been positive charges. For us, we will use this conventional current. Conventional just means uh, historically it's just been used and accepted. So we're going to use and accept this conventional current, even though it's really wrong. Um, when drawing a circuit, we always show the current flowing from positive to negative. Current always goes from positive to negative. Looking at this circuit, where we have a battery connected to a light bulb, positive terminal, negative terminal. The schematic is the same exact representation. Negative terminal is the smaller one. Positive terminal is the larger one. Then we have the resistor here. In this case, it's a light bulb, which may be represented with a circle with an X on it. It may be one of those squiggly lines that looks like a, res a normal resistor. It may be something that actually looks like a light bulb. There's not a real set um, way, but for this class probably is going to be either this X or um, the resistor symbol. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, if we looked at this circuit as electron flow, Electrons are going to be repelled by other electrons in the negative terminal, so they're going to go this direction. Well, Ben Franklin said it's a flow of positive charges, so it's coming from positive to lower. Even though it's the electrons actually moving, uh, this is still pretty much the case. Uh, and instead, we're looking at it as flowing from an area of high potential difference to low potential difference. This is actually a really cool animation. So you have the electrons that are flowing, but it appears as if the protons are moving from positive to the negative. So while electrons are going backwards, we have the charge, the flow of charge going from positive to negative. All right, don't get hung up on that. It doesn't matter. Just know 
we're going from high potential to low potential. High potential happens in the positive terminal of the battery. Low potential happens in the negative terminal of the battery. Review. No, not review. Kirchhoff's first law, the total current incoming coming into a junction must equal the total current leaving the same junction. So on a circuit, here we don't have a battery, so we're just assuming it's coming in with whatever potential difference is given to us. Um, so the current comes in and then is going to have a choice. Do those charges want to move up here to the 3 amps or do they want to come down here to the 2 amps? Well, whatever decision they make, the total current has to be the same incoming as it is leaving this junction, this intersection, where there's a choice. So if there's a junction, then the sum of the currents equals zero. So if we imagine five being positive coming in, minus three minus two equals zero. Kirchhoff's first law. Uh, again, five coming in. Oh. 9 going this way, and we have 4 coming into this junction. So we have 5 plus 4 coming into the junction, and then 9 amps leaving the junction. Total equals 0. Kirchhoff's first uh, law is given to you right here. Sum of the currents equals 0. What this also tells us is if you have resistors connected to each other one after another, we call that in series. So in series, your current is going to be the same. Meanwhile, if there's a junction, if there's a choice for the electricity to flow, then that means we're going to split up the current. Try this. Pause it. Try it. There you go. Try this one. Find, again, find um, current. Well, this time, current 3 is what we're looking for. Pause it again. There you go. Super easy math, right? Second law, we'll deal with that in the next video.